Welcome to another survival game guide episode in our Medieval Dynasty series. So by now, you may have realized that there are different animals that you can raise in Medieval Dynasty, and you might wonder if there is one or two animals that are perhaps the best to kind of like focus your attention and resources on, and there kind of, there kind of is. Um, there are some animals that, in my opinion, aren't exactly worth uh, raising, and this video will basically kind of go over that, the different animals that are in Medieval Dynasty, and perhaps the ones that maybe you should invest in the most, depending on your particular play style. So first, let's just kind of go over uh, animal husbandry and the animals in particular. Uh, there are eight uh, animals that you can raise in Medieval Dynasty. Two of them are mounts, and the other six are basically animals that will produce certain things for you that you could turn into other products uh, and sell them or, you know, use them in other ways. In order to get animals to produce for you, you do need to feed them. Um, and you put your food, you put the food right there. Or like there's, there's like little little feed bowls, basically, that you put the animal feed into. And you can do that manually. Uh, you can make it in the barn, the animal feed that is, and then bring it over and fill the uh, troughs manually. Or you can have a farmer, like I have this guy right here, uh, who will basically take the animal feed that you make and put in like the, the resource storage uh, and they will deliver it to the animals uh, that they are assigned to themselves, which is nice because that's just not, you know, that's something that you don't have to uh, handle. Now, your animals won't die if you don't feed them. Um, they don't starve to death, which is really great. So, like, if you don't have, you know, if you're not making a lot of animal feed just yet, you don't have to worry about them starving to death. They just won't produce anything if they don't have any food. That's basically how that works. So to get into the animals themselves, uh, the very first one that you unlock uh, is the hen house. Um, you can kind of see over here in our farming technology. Uh, the hen house unlocks after you get 50 tech points in the farming tree here. And uh, when you get that unlocked, you also get the ability to unlock the animal feed scheme, which is great because, you know, again, you need that to feed all the rest of these animals. So yay, <laughs> yay for that. Um, and the hen house uh, basically unlocks the ability to raise chickens. You have your roosters, you have your, your hens, and you have little chicks that they produce. Um, so it's worth having at least one or two roosters. Um, obviously, the more roosters you have, the more uh, fertile, I guess, the, the hens are, the more little chicks that they produce, um, which means you basically your, your hen house can fill up pretty quickly, which is, you know, not bad, pretty nice. And what they do is they produce two products for you. They produce eggs and they produce feathers. Um, so again, like chickens are kind of like, I don't think they're worth it to be honest. And I'll, I'll kind of go over this when we get to uh, another, uh, animal product, uh, or animal, well, animal here in a second, but, um, they, uh, they're, you know, if for, for bare bones, uh, animals, if you just want to experiment with what it's like with raising the animals in the game, you know, sure. Get a chicken. Uh, but I, I myself wouldn't recommend putting this, this hen house down, even though I, I have one currently. Just, you know, it's experiment, right? <laughs> but no. Uh, and you can see that there's eggs here that I can pick up uh, myself. But uh, when you assign a farmer to it, they tend to get uh, more eggs and more feathers than you would if you were just doing it on your own. So once you get uh, an animal pen down, do try to get a farmer assigned to it as quickly as you can. Just because if you're not, basically your animals aren't giving you the full yield they could be giving you. So that's the hen house. They basically produce uh, eggs and feathers for you. Um, and the reason why I say maybe don't don't do the hen house just yet is because there's actually a better version of chickens, and that is uh, the geese, the goose house, the goose house. There we go. Uh, it does take a while to obviously get here. You know, you need 500 te uh, tech points in your farming tree to unlock this. So it takes a while to grind up there, which is why, like, if you're really desperate for feathers and eggs, you know, sure, go for the hen house. If you can wait, I'd say just ignore this. That way, you, could, you know, you can avoid the taxes that come with the house and just, uh, build the goose house once you, uh, have it unlocked. And that's because... The geese, they produce the very same thing. They produce eggs and feathers, but they do so at a faster rate. So basically you get more eggs and more feathers from the geese than you do the chickens. Um, so it's kind of, in my opinion, worth more to wait for the geese if you can wait. Uh, so that's basically the thing. Exactly. Like the, the geese are exactly the same as the chickens. They just produce more, basically. 
Uh, so besides those guys, you also have pigs, which I have over here. I don't have too many animals yet because I'm super poor and I just, they're, animals are very expensive, which you will come to find. Um, they usually cost like at least like between like a thousand and like 2000 some. I think the, the mounts cost even more than that. I think they cost like 5,000 to 8,000 coins, something like that. They're like really expensive. Um, but here's our pigs. I don't know where my, my guy is currently. He's probably out and about doing his thing. Uh, but uh, the pig sty, uh, the primary uh, function of the pigs, there he is. I just have the one right now because, again, I'm super poor, uh, is that they produce manure. That is all they do is they just produce poop. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they you can kind of see it, like, in their stall. They, they, they do have poop, like, in their their stall here, which I can um, collect, and I'll get some uh, manure from that and all that. But uh, as you can see, I just picked some up there. And but the I have this lady here, this poor lady assigned to the pig sty, and she's basically producing, uh, or rather, uh, picking up um, the is it ready to go? The uh, the manure throughout the day. So we'll go to our animal husbandry, so I can just show you here. Uh, that's not what I'm doing. There we go. Animal husbandry, here we are. Okay, so she is basically picking up just under 33 uh, little pieces of manure each day. Um, and if you are a farmer, you know how important manure is. You use it, you pick it up from there, bring it to your barn, and you craft fertilizer from it, which you then use to fertilize your fields. So uh, pigs are very important for that. It'll just basically save you money from having to buy manure or fertilizer from the different traders throughout the, uh, the towns. So I think pigs are a really good investment for our farmers out there just because it'll save you money in the long run. Um, but that's really all that pigs do is they really just poop. <laughs> they just poop for you. Um, so that's pigs uh, and the pig sty. Uh, Another big animal that you can unlock in this game uh, later on um, throughout your, your farming uh, tree is cows. And cows uh, produce milk. That's their primary function. You can't slaughter them for meat or anything like that. They will just give you uh, milk. And milk is really great because you can make uh, cheese out of that. And cheese sells pretty gosh darn well. So, um, uh, you know, Cows are pretty good for, for, for that purpose. Um, but like I said, that, that, that's basically the only thing that, that they produce. And it takes a while to unlock it. But hey, cheese is pretty great to sell for our traders out there. Um, sheep are another uh, animal that you can unlock. I, I, I only have like these two, so I can't really show you what they look like. Maybe in a future video, we'll walk around, you'll see them. But uh, sheep are um, another just really great animal to have because they produce wool. And if you have uh, dabbled at all with the sewing uh, hut over yonder there, you know that besides flax, you need wool to make some of the clothing. And the only way that you can get wool is obviously you can buy it, but also you, you get it um, from your your sheep. Um, don't know if I have anything here that requires wool just yet, but um, uh, but yeah, so they, uh, they're they the only things that produce, there you go, like hats, for example. They're the only things that produce uh, the wool. And much like the flax, you use the wool to, like, make, you know, like, wool thread and uh, wool, like, pieces of wool and all that, basically. Uh, and then you make clothing out of, out of them. And clothing sells for a good amount of coin. So, you know, it's it's really good for traders out there to have sheep. Um, just so they can start producing some of that. And the more sheep you have, the more wool you have, which means, you know, the more clothing that you can make. Um, so that's sheep. Uh, and uh, the half side of sheep um, are goats. And goats and sheep can both go in the same kind of fold. Um, and uh, you might want to, like, if, you, if, you, if you're curious about goats, maybe you'll want to, like, you know, have it uh, half, your, half your fold with goats, half your fold with sheep. But I honestly recommend keeping them separate um, just because one might produce more uh, children faster than the other. So then suddenly you're, like... You have a lot of goats, but you don't have enough sheep and stuff like that. So it's easier, in my opinion, just to have two. Like, yes, it's more taxes in the long run, but you can also maximize their production levels. Um, so that's kind of like how I say to, to go for that. Um, and you can see here that the fold here, uh, it includes both sheep and goats. So once you get to uh, this, what is that, 2,500, I believe? I think it is. I don't have my glasses on. You'll have to excuse me. <laughs> uh, technology points. Uh, that's when you are basically able to buy your goats and your sheep and put them uh, in there. 
Um, so, you know, and the thing with goats, though, uh, is that they also produce milk. Like, that's, like, their main thing. They don't produce anything else, just milk. And uh, I think that, um, you know, they're not, like, the greatest investment just because I don't think they produce. And I don't have, like, the the formula uh, on hand. Um, on the If you check out the Medieval Dynasty wiki, for example, it will, sh it will tell you that, at least in regards to, like, the gooses, the geese uh, versus the hen house... It shows you that the geese produce more eggs and feathers uh, than the hen house. Um, then they don't have that formula available for cows or goats. But I am, in my own experience, it seems to me like the cows produce more milk than the goats, which makes sense because you can kind of see here that uh, the fold uh, is unlockable before the cow shed. So, um, you know, basically. As with most games, the things that are, you know, better, they tend to unlock later. So the fact that the cows unlock after the goats just kind of, like, makes sense to me that the cows will produce more milk than goats. It doesn't hurt to have, you know, both just because that's just that it's just more milk coming at you. Uh, and the cows, the cows tend to produce uh, or breed, I should say, uh, not as quickly as goats. So, um, you know, it's not a bad idea to have goats and cows if you want a lot of milk. But if you don't, if you're not like too worried about it, I would say save on goats and just go for cows. Um, they will uh, produce enough milk for you to, to kind of get, you know, some of your needs done. Yes, excuse you, Mr. Pig over there. And that's kind of like basically it for all of the animals that produce actual products. And that leads us to the mounts, which sadly I also don't have. I'm, I'm like, I really want a mount because all this walking around is killing me. But mounts are, you know, as they, as the uh, term suggests, they are basically things to, uh, that you can ride around just to, to, to make your journeys a lot faster, a lot easier. And there are two mounts in the game. The first is uh, the donkeys, the donkey shelter, and then uh, the, the stables for the horses. And if I bring this back up here, there we go. You can see that the donkeys, uh, their their shelter is unlocked far before the stable. Um, so in my opinion, and again, this is kind of like your own sort of what you think matters the most to you, I would say. I personally am pro donkey over pro horse. And um, that is because the donkeys are able to carry more than horses. Uh, even if you, like, fully deck out, you know, a donkey and a horse, the donkey just has, like, that slight edge over a horse. They're able to carry a little bit more weight. And that, to me, is a little bit more important because I usually um, primarily use my mounts when I'm out there trading and whatnot uh, or uh, when I am out getting ore from the mines. And I need a mount that will carry a lot of, a lot of stuff, right? So I don't have to, like, make that repeat journey so often. So for me, donkeys uh, serve that purpose, and they're not the fastest animal in the than like than a horse, for example. But uh, they do get the job done. They do they do go faster than you when you're running, in my experience, anyway. So I'm kind of pro donkey. Uh, I just find that their ability to uh, carry a lot uh, and carry a little bit more than horses to be worth it. Now, obviously, horses are great if you want to travel distances faster. They are far faster than donkeys, and certainly far faster than you on your own two little feet. Uh, they don't carry quite as much. They get really close. They do get really close, uh, but they are, you know, not exactly burdens of beasts. They're more just running really quickly from, you know, one place to the other. So, you know, if, if you can, if you can, if you want both, by all means, go for both. If you only want to invest in one. Again, it kind of really depends on your needs. If you want something that carries a lot of weight, go donkey. If you just want something to very quickly take you from one, you know, one town to the next, maybe choose a horse. So now that we've covered like the different animals in the game and, and their functions uh, and how to use them, um, basically we'll go over, you know, the best. And when it comes to the best animals in Medieval Dynasty, it, it comes down to your particular play styles that you're doing for your game. So with that in mind, um, I honestly think that for farmers, the very best animal that you can invest in uh, is the pig. Good old pigs over here because just the fact that they produce a lot of manure very quickly is going to make your farms a lot cheaper to uh, fertilize, basically. Um, so, uh, you know, invest in that pig as, as quickly as you can. Uh, save up money as much as you can uh, to buy your first pig or a few pigs and you'll have enough manure and enough fertilizer to 
start to really, you know, grow your fields and produce more crops and, and, and all that. And, you know, you'll, you'll get your money back very quickly after that. You can kind of see, like, I'm starting to grow my fields here. So my uh, fertilizer demands have increased substantially. So having that pig around is just making my uh, growth uh, and development of my fields uh, just go a lot, of, a lot faster for me and a lot cheaper because I don't have to buy that fertilizer or that manure from other uh, tradespeople. Uh, for our traders, those people who are kind of like uh, just trying to get a lot of production so they can sell and make coin, I actually think that you should invest in sheep. And the reason why I suggest sheep over like cows is because clothing items tend to sell a little bit more than cheese. Like I think cheese, you can get like a hundred some coin per uh, little thing of cheese. Whereas uh, with the wool and clothing that requires wool, like some of them sell for like 400 coins plus. Um, so, you know, you can get more bang for your buck that way. So if you can uh, buy like a lot of sheep, get like a big old sheep farm going on, right? Uh, you can make a lot of money uh, selling clothing and that'll get you a lot of, you know, coin in your pocket. So go for sheep if you can. And then if you, if you want to expand, you can always go for cows because, you know, cheese isn't bad either. Uh, but that, that clothing, clothing sells really high. So good investment there, in my opinion. And then finally, if you are doing a more of a, like a hunter focused pl uh, play style, um, you're out there hunting, uh, I recommend going for the goose, the goose house, um, just because they do produce a lot of feathers. And if you're a hunter, you're probably using some sort of uh, bow. Um, and if that's the case, you know, you're going to need a lot of feathers to make your arrows. So, uh, uh, the goose, the geese will will help out with that, and obviously you can you can go for the hen house uh, first, just if you're desperate for feathers. Um, but as soon as you get the option to upgrade to a goose house, I say get rid of your chickens, honestly, and just go ham on all the goose houses, and you'll have so many feathers to craft all the arrows and bolts and whatever with that you will uh, be fine. You'll never have to worry about uh, feathers again, really. <laughs> Um, so that's about it for our uh, animal husbandry video. Hopefully you found it helpful. Hopefully it helps you know you guide your your own production levels and whatnot. Um, but if you do have any other questions about animal husbandry or the animals or anything like that, do let us know in the comments. If you have your own strategy, please share those too. We'd love to hear them. Um, but otherwise, thanks so much for watching, guys. We will see you in the next one. That guy is coming, coming up to me. <laughs> but until then, uh, keep surviving and keep thriving.